You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nara here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you into the Let's Play episode of Echo. So the last time we left off, Kudzu actually managed to help rescue us, and now we're watching Leo bite the ever-loving crap out of Duke, getting what he deserves. Oh, and Brian got shot in the face. And apparently he's he's all right because he stumbled on out. Well, you know he's a bear. Bears got them thick skulls. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it and uh, see where this horror show takes us, shall we? <clears throat> all right, here we go. <clears throat> Duke doesn't move though as he lays back against the concrete, eyes closed, gasping for breath. His arms are at his sides, both of them leaking blood onto the ground. Leo really did a number on them. He definitely needs to go to the hospital. A hand touches my shoulder and I jump. I look back and see that it's Kudzu. S Sorry, you okay? Leo's gun hangs loosely from one of his hands. Kudzu, you fucking saved our lives! I grin at him as I almost sob with relief. I want to hug him, but I have to keep the gun on Duke. Of course. No, I'm sorry I didn't stop him when he took you. I, I wasn't sure what to do. He touches my shoulder again and I can feel him trembling. Don't, don't worry about it. We're okay now. Um, can someone get me out of these handcuffs, please? My arms are fucking killing me. K killing you? Uh, killing you? You ripped mine apart! Duke is practically sobbing now, curling up on his side to hold his arms to his chest. Fuck you, asshole. Leo spits at him as he tries to, re to adjust his position on the floor. Where are the... <clears throat> Where are the keys, Duke? Duke takes in a shuddering breath and holds it for a few seconds before answering. Right pocket! Kudzu walks over and kneels next to the weasel, sifting through his pocket. Keep an eye on the door, Chase, in case Blubbergut comes back. I try, not to, I try to angle myself so I can keep an eye on both the door and Duke, even though I'm pretty sure the latter is through at this point. Kudzu pulls the small metal key out before moving over to Leo, fumbling around for a good while before the handcuffs finally drop to the ground. Leo kneels there for a moment, wringing out his wrists. You okay? He smiles at me. I'm a little sore, but I think I'll be alright. He gets unsteadily to his feet, taking a pair of handcuffs up with him before bending quickly to give me a kiss on the head. I'm so happy you're okay, Chase, and thank you, Kudzu. He slaps the raccoon on the back before turning his attention to the weasel. Duke notices and quickly curls up tighter. I was just trying to help everyone! Ah! Leo grabs him by his bloodied arms before yanking him violently to his feet. The weasel screams double as the wolf twists those arms behind his back, handcuffing them. Why the hell do you have so many handcuffs anyway? Duke starts sobbing again until Leo whips him around and slaps him across the face. Duke sways, stunned by the power of the blow, before Leo brings his hand back and hits him on the other cheek. Shut the fuck up! Leo. Leo ignores Kudzu as he pulls the chair back up and throws Duke into it so violently it almost tips over. But please! I'm, I'm sorry, I just want to help! Duke, cower, Duke cowers as Leo raises his hand again. I realize how tightly I'm holding onto the gun, and though I'm pointing it at the ground now, I'm sure to take my finger off the trigger. While Leo's violence is a little disturbing, it's almost comforting to have him throw his weight around after how the, how the weasel had threatened us. Kudzu, on the other hand, doesn't look comforted at all. He's still trembling from the earlier fight, and he's pulling at the fur on his chin as he watches Leo. Careful, Leo. Let's take him in, into the cops or something. Kudzu looks over his shoulder at the door. Going to Peyton was probably a better idea now that I realize how messed up everyone is. Yeah... I mean, if that monster they're all talking about isn't real, would have been a better to, would have been better to risk that than get involved with these idiots. I hadn't even thought about the supposed thing keeping everyone from leaving the town. It seems silly now that we'd let a stupid story like that keep us here. Leo doesn't seem to be listening. You're a fucking lunatic, Duke. Why shouldn't I just kill you right now? Leo. Leo looks over his shoulder at us, finally, shaking his head at Kudzu conspiratorially. Kudzu goes silent as Leo goes back to staring down the weasel. Now, explain to us what the hell is going on! Leo leans in closer with his bloody muzzle and Duke cringes back. 
Tell the truth and maybe I'll let you go. Leo glances at me. I won't kill you, at least. He's trying to make it clear to me that he's just trying to scare Duke. At least that's what I hope he's doing. I already explained! Duke's eyes dart back and forth between us. The way he's kicking his feet around with a high-pitched, whiny voice makes me think of a child. A really ugly, malnourished child. I still feel a little bad for him, though. Remind me, because I was a little fucking distracted. Kudzu slides up next to me and, s and sets his hand on my shoulder. You want to catch the door? You want to watch the door? I touch, I touch hand in acknowledgement and turn around to face the door. I don't really think Brian's going to be coming back, though. I told you, something bad's happening and we need to figure out what. Uh, yeah, but how did kidnapping us help anything? I, I, uh... Duke sighs deeply and I glance over my shoulder to see him slumping in defeat. Last time this happened, it might have been caused by a murder. Not the... Not the murder, but that... But that the guy got away with murder. There's a moment of silence. Okay... Leo's tone demands that Duke go on. So the guilt from the guy or the worry in the town or just spirits, heck, I don't know, maybe all that. But it came together to make everything go crazy. Okay, sure, but how does this have anything to do with us? I saw us, I saw us the otter sneaking around town before you, before you says they got here. I look back again and see Duke looking at me. So was Leo. Seemed kind of fishy to me, so I thought he might have something to do with it all. Was my only lead. Leo doesn't respond this time. I look back again and see that he's still looking at me. What is it? You told me yourself, Leo, that you saw him sneaking around too. It was someone else. How the hell do you know that? What are you guys talking about? Kudzu, can you watch the door? I finally turn around. Leo leans on. Leo leans one hand on the back of Duke's chair as he sighs. If only you remember, Chase. I told you about how I thought I saw someone out my window that looked like you. Leo turns his glare back onto Duke. Got drunk with this asshole and accidentally told him about it, too. But we both saw it. Isn't that a little bit strange? Some otter came by the town that looked like Chase. What the hell? What the hell else was it? Leo glances back at me, and I feel like there's some doubt in his eyes. I mean, you weren't here, right? Of course I wasn't. I know, I know. Just making sure. Leo turns his back to Duke. Leo turns back to Duke. Why would that mean anything, anyway? Duke looks around, visibly clenching his toes. I've, I've heard stuff about doubles, like doppelgangers or something. Doppelgangers? Sure, but people talked about that shit happening back then, seeing themselves and stuff. Okay, so if we believe that shit, why would it mean he has anything to do he has anything to do with anything? Well, my grandpappy said that the guy that did it was in two or three places at once sometimes. There's a moan of silence as we all absorb that bit of information. Sounds like a load of shit to me, Duke. Duke jumps up in his seat. I'm just telling you what I know. So what's your solution to all this, then? I don't know. It stopped, it stopped when they got the guy. Duke cowers in the chair, then glances at me. Leo follows his gaze, and his eyes turn steely. Duke seems to notice Leo's sudden change in demeanor, but before he can do anything, he gets a massive slap from the wolf. Leo, stop it! Duke immediately starts sobbing in and curls in on himself. Me? This fucker wants to get a chase! It did seem that way. Did Duke think the only way to stop all the problems in this town was to kill me? Duke. Kudzu tries a different approach, his voice much gentler than Leo's. The problem with your theory is that Chase hasn't killed anyone, right Chase? Of course not! Of course not. So maybe we need to rethink things a little, huh? Or maybe he can do that in a fucking jail cell. We're going back to get my van. Then we're going to get the hell out of here. If we can. I'm still not sure about that thing the mayor was talking about. What thing? Uh, a monster or something. The mayor told us it's killing people that are trying to leave. 
Leo stares. Has the town really gone that fucking insane? Kudzu shrugs. There were bodies. Jesus. Leo looks around. Well, it still sounds like bullshit, but if there is anything, we'll be fine if we leave in a car. The motel is closer. We can use my car instead. Sure. Duke is still staring at me with a hard look. I get the feeling that, despite all the things we just told him, he's not buying it. Leo hauls the weasel off the chair, gaining a little squeak of pain from Duke as he's forced to break eye contact with me. What about the others? We're gonna try to find everyone we can before we leave, but the priority is to get ourselves to a police station. Leo pulls me to stand in front of him before gesturing at Kudzu. Cud, take the gun. Safety's off now. Kudzu visibly frowns as I hand it to him. Yeah, sorry about that. I want Chase between us. I don't trust these fuckers to not try anything, especially if Brian comes back. So with Kudzu leading the way, we make our way out of Brian's house and into the night. It's quieter this time around as we head, as we head into the deserted night street. Seems like things have settled at least, a little at least. Kudzu's fur still bristled out on the back of his neck. I'm starting to worry about him. He's been tense, even considering the situation we're in. Keep your eyes peeled anyway. Of course. I've also been sensing a strange sort of tension between the two of them. It can probably be put up to the situation currently at hand, though. We're all on edge. I can see the motel a ways down the road, but ominously, the lights are all out. Duke has gone quiet for the most part. I wonder if he's just given up or if he's planning something. Hopefully it's the former. I'm not really seeing anything out of the ordinary here. Trust me, things are fucked up. We pass the diner, the moonlight glinting softly off its metal edges. A dark, sick feeling sets in and I stare at the black windows. That's where it all started. Should we, should we check to see if she's still there? Leo's quiet behind me for a moment and clears his throat. Don't see why we need to do that. I don't know, to tell the cops about it or something? If the cops haven't been there, then I'm sure she's still in there. No use looking inside. <sighs> alright. Hey, it's gonna be okay, alright? <sighs> Not for Janice. Leo doesn't say anything to that as we continue down the road, finally reaching the motel parking lot. Keep moving. I look behind me and see that Duke stopped, still looking back at the diner. I see something. What? Kudzu stops too and looks back at us. Something. I look at the diner, but I see nothing moving in the windows or in front of it. It's way too dark to see anything in there anyway. Leo prods at Duke's back, but the weasel refuses to move, rooted to the spot. Am I going to have to carry you? Leo lets go of Duke for just a moment, reaching up to turn him around, probably to throw the weasel over his shoulder. But before he can, he can do that, Duke screams, long and loud, and it raises all the hair on the back of my neck. Before Leo can stop him, the weasel takes off into the night, away from the diner, toward a grouping of trees and bushes on the side of the road. Leo curses and immediately goes after him. Koji starts to follow. Don't follow me! Wait by the car! Leo shouts over his shoulder before disappearing into the brush. Then, more faintly, and watch Chase! Kudzu and I stare into the darkness, listening to the two of them crash through the brush before fading out into silence. After a few moments, Kudzu rubs his head and turns to me. Well, I guess we should get to the car then. I frown, not really worried that Duke can do much to Leo, but rather that they'll run into someone that could. Shouldn't be that hard to catch him, he's in handcuffs. The Duke can be fast when he wants to be. Fuck. I can feel like we should have gone with him. I feel like we should have gone with him. I keep staring into the darkness of the brush and Kudzu puts a hand on my shoulder as he passes. Don't worry, Leo can take care of himself. Especially when he's up against someone like Duke. Uh, handcuffed Duke. Yeah. Reluctantly, I follow the raccoon. Leo's brief presence had been so strong and reassuring, it's kind of jarring to be without it again. At the same time, though, it's not all that different with Kudzu. Leo's just more overpowering with it, I guess. I fish my keys out of my pocket, and then suddenly realize where we're at. 
Hey, we should check our room. Jenna or TJ might be in there. Maybe even some of the others. Kudzu looks at the dark motel, scanning the rows of doors. Yeah, we should, but I think we should wait for Leo. I don't really trust anyone right now. I realize he's implying that one of my friends could have gone insane, too, and I also realize I can't blame him. From what I saw and what I've heard, TJ might be acting the same way as Duke. That thought causes my stomach to turn sickly. Listen, I gotta pee real quick, okay? Okay. I'm just gonna go over behind that corner. Don't do it! He points over to the side of the motel. No problem. I'm getting just a little annoyed that everyone is acting like I'm a little kid that needs to be watched. Ah, damn it, alarm chan! Oh, okay. Hopefully nothing horrible happens to Kudzu or Leo. Oh, man. This is creepy as hell. Oh, now we got a monster running around town, killing people who try to leave. Oh, man. Oh, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been another episode of Echo. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.